Hey guys, it's Buff Q here again. Uh, now that it's October, I thought I'd go ahead and take the opportunity to do an updated knife collection video. Haven't done one of these since the beginning of the year, and I've had a few things change since then, so I thought this might be a good time to go ahead and do this. I did go ahead and uh, purchase one of the Pelican uh, knife cases. I, I don't know that they're really specifically made for uh, knife collections, but they work really well for it. They've got the, the pick and peel foam. Um, and I'm real satisfied with the the case. So that's that's one of the the biggest changes I've had in my uh, in collection, just in terms of what I keep my knives in. So starting in the back here, some of this stuff is the same guys, and some of it's new. Okay, probably my my favorite aspect of my entire knife collection, my Endura fours. These are just great knives. Um, really have stood the test of time. They've been out for a while now. And I gotta say, one of the reasons I, I like Spyderco so well is because of the color options that they offer. Okay, so here's another one, same thing again, Endura 4 with the full flat grind, this one in brown. <clears throat> one of the reasons I like Spyderco so well is because they offer such cool colors. I'm really not a big fan of just plain black blades. Okay, to me that's kind of boring. Something I have started doing uh, to all my blades is, um, yes, you can tell I'm, I'm doing the zip tie thing, a la nothing fancy, as well as doing some of my own engraving on the blade. Okay, some of these it shows up better than others. It all kind of depends on how good the lighting is, and, you know, I don't have a, a super high quality engraver, but it works, and honestly, it just, it makes me happy. Um, all of this, as you can tell, is kind of uh, inspired by the the Nut and Fancy project, and I thought, you know, I, I, I really agree with his philosophy. I think there are two conversations to be had. I think one is, is um, you know, first kind of cool, you know, how practical is the item, how much use can you get out of it, and the other being second kind of cool, does it just make you happy? Is it something you like? Is it something that kind of makes you smile? And with all of this stuff, you know, zip ties and different colored lanyards, engraving the blades, things like that. You know, yeah, it, it, it just is stuff that just kind of makes me happy. Um, moving on here in the back, got one of my, this was the first Dragonfly I think I ever purchased. Um, I've had several of these. I've given one away as a gift. And, you know, these are just, these are great lightweight blades. Um, I really like that you don't have to deal with any kind of nested steel liners in these. Um, don't know if you guys can hear that. My my dog, I've got a red tick coonhound, and he's 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 a little anxious. He's in the background wondering why he can't be out here in the video. Um, then here we have the um, the dragonfly in H1 steel. So um, you know the the regular dragonfly is incredibly lightweight. That's one of the reasons so many people like it is because it's, yes, it's small, but it's incredibly lightweight. Um, this one here, again, doing the nothing fancy thing. I've, I've put it there, it's 1.3 ounces. Um, this one here, uh, I believe is 1.2. No, I have this one is 1.3 as well. Okay, I thought this one was a little bit lighter, but it looks like they're actually both about the same. Okay, Dragonfly is just such a cool knife. Really like the Dragonfly. Um, next knife I have back here, I actually just purchased and I haven't reviewed yet. This is, whoops, this is the Spyderco Ambitious. I started to say Tenacious. No, it's not the Tenacious. This is the Ambitious. This is the little, the little brother, okay? Um, I'm not going to say much about it right now. For one thing, you all probably know, I, I don't have anything here that hasn't been reviewed by anybody many, many times, but as far as my opinion... I'm going to hold off because I don't really have much of an opinion to give you yet. Like I said, just just purchased this knife, and um, hopefully that'll be probably the next video I have coming out for you guys as a review on that. On down from that, maybe the most reviewed knife on YouTube by Spyderco, the Tenacious. Um, this is a cool blade. Oh, yeah, engraving shows up nice on this one. Okay, this is a cool blade for the money. Yes, you're not getting the same fit and finish on a Tenacious as what you'll get with, say, an Endura. Definitely not with a paramilitary. 
uh, or even like any of the smaller Delicas. But for what you pay, um, your money goes a long way with, with this blade, with the Tenacious. Just very um, rugged, I guess you could say. Um, nice action, G10 grips. You know, there's not, there's not too much bad you can say about it other than the fact of it just doesn't have the same... Um, I'll, I'll just say fit and finish as, as some of the other Spyderco blades. On down from that, had this one for a while now. Yeah, this is kind of the, the crown jewel, I guess. This is the paramilitary too. Um, you know, I say the, the Tenacious is the most reviewed knife. I, it, I may be wrong. It may be this one. It may be the um, any of the 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 para line, okay? Um, you know, this knife to me is like it's kind of the equivalent of your. Um, sorry, my dog is really distracting me right now. I hope it's not cutting too bad in the video. That knife to me is kind of like the equivalent of one of your your firearms that you have in your collection that you don't want it to end up becoming a safe queen. But honestly, for me, this thing is is dangerously close to becoming a safe queen because you know you pay so much money for it. It's it's an expensive knife, and so when I have a hard use task, I don't ever reach for this one. It's more than capable, maybe the most capable of all the knives in in my collection. But I don't want to you know I don't want to rough it up. I want to keep the edge nice. Um, I am slowly learning how to how to put a good edge on a knife. I think it's definitely an art form. It takes a lot of practice, but considering all that I don't want to rough this knife up I want to take good care of it so often I, I kind of tend to leave this one alone because I'm afraid I may have to use it and I know that's kind of silly but that's just the way it is now on the other side of that conversation <laughs> right here this knife is pretty thrashed okay this oh gosh that was awful there we go um this is my spider co Pacific salt. Yeah, this is the Pacific salt. Okay, this thing has seen some <laughs> Has seen some wear. Okay It's it's pretty it's pretty thrashed got a real bad ugly spot uh, on the blade there. Yeah, I know looks like hell, but um, There's a reason that's there. It's kind of a long story. I'm not gonna get into it right now, but um, Basically this knife got to a point where it started gathering so many little dings and nicks and scrapes and scratches i thought well you know what i don't have to worry about this one anymore my my pacific salt man I'm having a hard time getting a good deployment on that for you guys to see it's because i'm having to hold it at a weird angle anyway this this has just become my beater knife and for a beater knife gosh a spiderco pacific salt's a pretty darn good beater knife to have um i kind of hate that it it got to that point you can see the the grind back here is real funky looking and it's got this nasty looking spot here and clips all worn out and you know if you could feel the the handle here it's got some rough spots on it i mean it's just it's worn out but um this is the knife i grab whenever i've got a really like a legit hard task like um for example uh i, I own a, a fair amount of pro not a lot but i own a fair amount of property and i mow a lot of my land with an old 1968 Cub Lowboy farm tractor. And uh, about a week ago, the carburetor went bad on the tractor as I was using it to mow. And I had some really hard um, prying tasks that I had to do immediately because fuel was, was gushing everywhere. And um, while I was on the tractor mowing, I had this, I had this clipped to my I was just wearing a pair of like basketball shorts and I had this clipped and this is basically what I had to use. I didn't have time to run and grab another tool. So this is what I ended up using. Um, and you know, it, it, it was being covered in gasoline and, uh, I was, I was really putting some, um, some nicks and scrapes in the, in the edge of the blade. Okay. And so this is just, that's, that's just what it is. It's become the, the go-to work knife okay sometimes you just <laughs> you, you wear one out and that's just the way of it you know that's what's nice about spider because even when you start putting some serious use on it uh it still holds up well all right so after that back here have um three different flavors of the 
Victor Knox Cadet. Um, the silver and the black ones you see here, these two are just the standard run-of-the-mill, just regular cadets. The one in the middle here my wife bought me for my birthday, and this is the 2017 limited edition cadet. Okay, so um, those are a fun knife to collect uh, as well as carry. They're really, really useful, very practical, just a, a neat knife to have. <clears throat> Going on down here, um, this is... Oh, and I just spaced on the the model of this guy. This is the um, Salt 2. Sorry, had to cheat, had to look at the handle. This is the Salt 2, Spyderco Salt 2. Um, dimensionally, it's the exact same as a Delica. Well, a Delica 4, anyway. Um, but you've got H, H1 steel. This one is a coated, coated blade, H1 steel. And the weight on this guy is... 2.2 ounces is what I have. Okay, 2.2 ounces. Uh, let's compare it to, say, one of the regular Delicas. Okay, so we do have a difference here. Um, Salt 2 comes in at 2.2. Regular comes in at 2.5. Okay, so a little bit of a difference there. And you, you, can, you can definitely feel it in the hand, the difference in weight between the regular Delica and the Salt 2. Uh, this is a great blade. My wife and I like to go hiking. Specifically, we like to go check out waterfalls. Um, this is a neat, neat blade to to clip to your pocket um, when you're doing something like that. Because again, it's coated H1 steel, so you know it's never going to rust. Um, down here, same thing again. Just a, a standard um, Delic 4 and FFG. Um, you know, and I know a lot of you are going to look at this and say the zip tie thing is stupid. Um, you know, why do you need to have that ability to wave it out of the pocket? You can still open it with just your thumb anyway. And I totally agree, guys. I totally know. But I just like it. I think it looks cool. I like adding the little bit of color pop to each blade. And it makes it unique. That's, that's really all it is. I'm not saying if you don't do this, you're crazy. I know that's not the case. I just think it looks cool. Plain and simple. All right, after that, Spyderco Rhodey. Um, nothing really all that interesting to say about this blade. Uh, then here we have, and this is kind of funny, this is the Spyderco Grasshopper. Um, yes, I did make this knife to where it could be opened one-handed. Uh, for you to be able to open it one-handed, you have to have a lanyard, or at least I do, have to have a lanyard, you have to have a zip tie. You have to have the lanyard, excuse me, lanyard, to give your lower finger something to grip as you push with your thumb. Okay, it's it's a it's a tag team operation. Is this knife made to be open one-handed? No, of course not. Um, I just wanted to make it that way because again, I think it's cool. Uh, after that is actually one of my wife's spider co's. This is, uh, I believe this is the man bug. Yeah. Wait a minute, is it a man bug? I can't remember if this is a man bug or a ladybug. I'm sure someone will chime in and, and tell me. I think it's the man bug. At any rate, uh, cool color. This is the burn orange. I really like this color. Um, yet another another place where I happen to agree with, with Nut and Fancy. The burnt orange color in anything. Just like, it, not just knives, but anything. I think burnt orange is a cool color. Uh, and it, it matches up nicely with the, with the dark blue there. So, that's cool. Uh, over here, if you haven't seen my video on this, um, go check it out. The Spider Co. Pacific, no, 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 I'm sorry, Atlantic Salt. I always get them wrong. This is the Atlantic Salt. Okay, this is Spyderco's rescue knife. Um, I, t long story short, if you haven't seen the other video, I basically bought this because it was a really, really good price at uh, a local big box sporting goods store, and that's the only reason I bought it. Like, the price was so good, I, I was like, I, I'd be crazy to pass that up, okay? So that stays clipped. I, I put it in here for the video, but this, this knife actually stays clipped to the sun visor in my car, okay? Um, specifically because with that, you've just got quick capability to cut a seat belt, and that's, that's basically its dedicated job, okay? Um, that's it for the Spydercos. Um, right here, this is kind of a silly little thing, but it, it actually means a lot to me. Um, 
without going into too much detail, um, I, I'm, I'm a teacher by profession, and this, this was given to me by a student of mine. Uh, he referred to it as a kindness coin. Um, he's in the, the Boy Scouts, and I'm not totally sure if this is a actual Boy Scout thing or if this was just something that he wanted to give me, and he also happens to be in the Boy Scouts. But um, I, I had helped him with a, a specific project he was working on, and he came in the next day and said, Hey, uh, I know it's silly, but stick this in your pocket. i kind of like you to have it. And he explained to me what it is, and... I don't know, it just means a lot to me, and so usually when in the mornings I open the case here to decide what knife I'm going to carry for the day, usually I always grab this little, uh, it's just a little wooden disc is all it is, but I throw it in my pocket, and, and if, if any of you guys are like me, you, you fidget. You kind of always want to have your your hands on something, you're always kind of doing something. So this is just something to have in your pocket just to kind of uh, fidget with. That's all that is. Uh, so moving on down here, <clears throat> up next... Benchmade Griptilian. Okay, nothing revolutionary. Pretty standard. Great all around EDC, EDC blade. Next to that is my Barrage, the Benchmade Barrage. Uh, I think this is the 580. Yes, Barrage 580. I don't ever carry this knife. Ever. It's just too heavy. It's really heavy. Um, I don't know if I put the weight on this one. No, I don't think I did because I don't ever carry it. Um, awesome. I mean, very well built, very sturdy in the hand. But honestly, this is like this is like carrying like three of those. Okay, or at least it feels that way. So it's just really heavy. So I just don't. It doesn't get much pocket time. Uh, on down from that, mini griptilian, classic. Nothing fancy. Just is what it is. I like the color on that. I like the yellow mini grips. I think those look cool. I'm down from that, another mini grip. Bought this one because it reminds me of a Spyderco. Um, I like Benchmade. Benchmade's a great company. They make some great products. But if you can't tell, obviously Spyderco is, is, is where my heart is. And when I saw that Benchmade had a knife, well, has a has a way to put the, the circle deployment hole uh, in their blades. I was excited about that. Uh, up next is the uh, Benchmade Proper. This is a cool knife. I really like this knife. If you didn't see my video on this, uh, shortly after I got this knife, I dropped it into a campfire. <clears throat> um, going on down, uh, SOG Flash 1. Eh. Of all my knives, this is, this is probably my least favorite. I, I know that a lot of people like this knife, and I know that this is the knife that kind of started um, Nothing Fancy's YouTube career. I just, eh, it's okay. It's just not very well made in my opinion. Not very well made at all. And on a lot of these knives, guys, I haven't taken the time to show you, but on a lot of these, I've, I've done the, uh, the custom jimping thing like I did on this one. It doesn't look great. Okay, it's average. Just did it with a Dremel tool. But even stuff like that, um, adding your own jimping, adding your own engraving, your own custom lanyard, um, you know, replacing the pocket clip with maybe a deep carry pocket clip, uh, zip ties, all this stuff is just ways you can customize your own stuff. And it's just neat, guys. Try it, try it out if you haven't done anything with any of your blades. Get brave, okay? Get down on the on the blade with some kind of uh, engraver or Dremel and, and do something to at least one of them and then go, oh boy, I really hate that, or hey, I kind of like that. I want to do that some more, okay? Up next, Sog Mini Aegis. Another great blade. Extremely light and extremely sharp. This thing has stayed just incredibly sharp, like, like dangerously so. Um, I keep all of my blades really sharp, but this one has specifically impressed me on how long it's held the factory edge. Okay, after that, uh, Twitch 2. It's like Twitch 2. Kind of a cool little blade. Um, if I haven't talked about it, and I can't remember, this little sign you see on a lot of my blades it's not a hashtag. Dear God, it's not a hashtag. Um, this is a symbol that uh, my great-grandfather used to mark all of his hand tools with years ago so that he could tell when he was on a job, hey, that's mine, or no, that's not mine. That was a little symbol he used. It was three lines up and down, two lines across. Okay, so it's not, it's not the pound sign. It's not a hashtag. It's kind of a family thing. 
Um, moving on down, this is a CRKT quill. I believe this is the quill. Neat little blade. I really like the, the black dyed bone on this knife. Just real sleek looking. This is a nice one if you're if you're going out and you're real dressed up, okay, drop this one down your your pocket and your suit coat. And just a nice thing to have. Um, yeah, multi-tool. <laughs> I, I just don't get excited about multi-tools. All right, sorry, nothing fancy. Um, down here, the Buck, I think this is a Buck Solo. Um, another just nice kind of... Um, dressy occasion knife. Nice polished bolsters on it. Just a nice looking knife. Um, next to it, this little toothpick. Um, I need to do a video on this. This was carried by my great uncle who was a survivor of the Bataan Death March. He did not have this. <laughs> he didn't have this on him while he was in the military, but he was on the Bataan Death March, survived, and um, later in his life he carried this little knife on him. So that's that's kind of a treasure. Uh, and then the last one here, this is the little Outdoor Edge uh, Mini Blaze. This is like a $11 to $12 knife that I was just really, really surprised by the quality. Um, 8CR 13 MOV steel, nice feeling grip, just not all cheaply prized knives are junk, okay? That's that's one thing I'm, I'm definitely starting to learn for myself. All right, I'm going to wrap the video up. Obviously, I'm outside, and I've, I've quickly lost my light. So I um, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Like I said, I'll be getting that Spyderco Ambitious review out to you guys soon. Um, if I don't do another video before then, which hopefully I will, I hope you guys have a very happy Halloween. Thanks for watching, guys.